$70,000. Is that pocket change for you? Would you like to avoid having a lesion like this one? This was the total cost of care for each of the four Radford University students who contracted leishmaniasis on a trip to the Amazon rainforest in Peru in 2017. Travelers have many things they need to prepare before their trip. Some of the biggest questions they need to answer are, what will I do every day? Where will I go? And what will I bring? A question that is often not at the top of the list is, how will I prepare my body and my immune system? If you're a traveler or plan to be, there are health precautions and tips that you should keep in mind before you go. Public health concerns are not things you should be afraid of, but you should be proactive in protecting yourself. When people travel to foreign countries especially, they are at risk of contracting sickness and disease that their bodies are not used to fighting. Therefore, if you plan to travel somewhere exotic or even somewhere that's different than your normal environment, you should equip yourself with information, vaccines, medicine, and insurance. If you're traveling to Peru, Brazil, Turkey, Israel, or India, one disease in particular you should look out for is leishmaniasis. Leishmaniasis is a protozoan parasite that can infect humans and can be caused by about 20 different species of leishmania. Leishmaniasis is transmitted through the bite of an infected female sandfly. The parasite goes through its life cycle by traveling from mammal to sandfly and back to an uninfected mammal or human. This disease affects countries such as Peru and India because their climate is a perfect breeding ground for sandflies. Anytime a traveler is in these places, especially if they have never been exposed to this disease before, they are at risk. However, the most common time and place a person could be infected is at night in a wooded area because that is when sandflies are the most active. Anyone who is exposed to a climate where sandflies live will inevitably get sandfly bites. The good news is that not all sandflies carry leishmaniasis, but the bad news is that you can't tell which ones do. Sandflies will bite any exposed skin and sometimes even unexposed skin if they get under your clothing. So what might it look like if you get leishmaniasis? The most common form is cutaneous. Leishmania brasiliensis typically produces lesions which appear on the skin and ulcerate or deepen in appearance. Leishmania brasiliensis also has potential to become mucosal months or years after skin lesions heal. This can occur if a cutaneous form is not treated and the parasites metastasize and cause lesions in the mucous membranes. The most severe form of leishmaniasis is visceral and it is deadly if not treated. So what happens if you get leishmaniasis? If you are diagnosed with leishmaniasis, this means that you likely have one or more lesions either at the site of a sandfly bite or at a place where the skin was opened or damaged and you should seek treatment. The treatment may include oral medication, but if those fail, a toxic IV infusion is necessary. Getting treatment will ensure proper healing and help prevent reoccurrence of the disease. However, treatment is not cheap. Treatment and doctor bills can cost upward of $70,000. Therefore, having health insurance before, during, and after travel is very important. Now that we know what leishmaniasis is, how you could get it, what it looks like, and what the treatment is, let's talk prevention. There is currently no vaccine for leishmaniasis, so the best way to prevent it is to do whatever you can to avoid sandfly bites. Here are a few strategies. Always wear long clothing treated with permethrin. Tuck your shirt into your waistband and tuck your pant legs into your socks. Apply DEET with a concentration greater than 20% to your body a few times a day and sleep under treated bed nets. All of these strategies will prevent bug bites and treated bed nets will help deter mosquitoes and sandflies during their most active times. Let's put these tips into action. 
Welcome to the jungle, folks. Once you make it to your destination, it is important to implement multiple prevention strategies. While remembering what you can do to prevent bug bites, don't forget to have fun on your trip. Do your best to protect yourself and look out for your fellow travelers, but enjoy the new scenery that is around you. Welcome home. You may be wondering, so what do I do now? When you come back, you will likely still have bug bites. Let's face it, you can't prevent them all. Don't worry, this is normal and somewhat unavoidable. You don't need to worry, but you do need to monitor. Your bites should heal within two to three weeks. If any persist, then you should make note of them and continue to monitor their healing. Some questions you might ask yourself are, is the bite swollen or painfully itchy? Is the bite scabbing or deepening into a wound? Do you notice abnormal swelling of lymph nodes anywhere else on your body? Do you have any open wounds on your body that are not healing? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you should consider seeing a doctor. The sooner you see a doctor, the better. These signs are not sure signs that you have been infected, but you should investigate and take your health into your own hands. The earlier you are diagnosed, the sooner you can be treated and minimize complications. So to recap, you should take the risk of disease when traveling seriously. On top of that, you should take preventative measures to lessen your risk. Financially, you should invest in health insurance because traveling can be unpredictable and you never know what you will encounter. Traveling can be really fun and rewarding, but it can also be scary to travel to a new place. However, when you know you have taken the proper precautions to ensure safe travel and optimum health, you can worry less and explore more.